Good morning and welcome to Psalm Day. My name is Evan. I'm one of the ministers at St. Mary's Anglican Church. And today for Psalm Day, we're looking at the second half of Psalm 109. Yesterday we looked at verses 1 to 20, and today we are looking at verses 21 through to the end of the psalm at verse 31. I'm actually not going to read the psalm, so it would be better for you to read it first and then um, come back and watch the rest of the video. What we saw yesterday is it was almost a courtroom scene where... Um, the psalmist was uh, bringing a case against an accuser, someone who was, who in the psalmist's eyes was quite evil. And we had to think about this and we sort of brought it back on ourselves. Um, being that if we, you know, we usually try and put ourselves into the situation where we are the psalmist, but in reality, in the spiritual world, we are the ones who are the, the evil ones. Um, and uh, Jesus or God is the person doing the accusing. Um, but let's look at verse 21 onwards and see how the tone of the psalm changes. So uh, in verse 21, we get a big flip and the psalmist goes from talking about this other person to talking about them. Uh, and we, we get the real feel of the, of the lament as the psalmist calls on the Lord to help them. Um, but you, O sovereign Lord, deal well with me for your name's sake, out of goodness of your love, for I am poor and needy. Uh, my heart is wounded within me. I fade like an evening shadow, uh, shaken off like a lotus. My, um, I give way from fasting. My body is thin and gaunt. And so the uh, psalmist paints this image of weakness. Why does he do that? He paints an image of weakness. The reason why is because God is his strength. God is his strength. The psalmist knows that true strength lies in having faith in the Lord. And true strength comes from being supplied from the Lord. Um, and the Lord is the only person for the psalmist who is able to uh, do the things that he needs. And so what is the psalmist's way forward? What is the psalmist's way back to having things and being, um, uh, being I guess, healed, uh, being full again inside? It's via the Lord. As we continue, there's a cry for help. In verse 28, um, and also we begin to reflect a little bit um, on the psalmist's uh, relationship with other people again in verses 27 and 28. Um, instead of just one person this time, it's a group of people. But the object of this bit is not that the Lord would just do things, but that they would know that what is happening is because of the Lord, and particularly this person's faith in the Lord. Now, considering that this is a psalm of David, it took a pretty expected turn. We we quite often see this sort of language in the psalm of in the psalms of David. Um, and there, <coughs> pardon me. Um, but there's this wonderful verse in verse 28, and I'll, I will read it out. Um, they may curse, but you will bless. When they attack, they will be put to shame, but your servant will rejoice. Um, and it's this idea of the Lord turning things that were meant for bad into good. The idea I talked about a little while ago, um, in which is Joseph's line in Genesis. Um, and then where we finish in verse 30, we've, if the, remember if the laments are peaks and troughs, um, you know, we, we started and we came down into the accusations. And then when, the, when we did the flip into verse 21, we started to come back up again. And we reached the high in verse 30. With my mouth, I will greatly extol the Lord. In the great throng, I will praise him. For he stands at the high hand, sorry, he stands at the right hand of the needy one to save his life from those who condemn him. And this is where David really wants to land. Um, it's a message for himself. It's a message for his people. that The Lord saves those who are in need. And that's you know true, and I think we are very quick to interpret this in, like in terms of like uh, social justice and all that sort of stuff. But of course, we would minimize God if we were to, if we were to restrict Him into social justice, um, because the world is bigger than that. The world is bigger than social justice. The world has spiritual warfare happening constantly. And just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there, doesn't mean it's not happening, doesn't mean that people don't die. And so we are in need of the God who gives strength. 
we are in need of the God from last week, sorry, from yesterday, who justifies us in the courtroom. We are the ones in need. And so we should call upon the Lord to do the great things that uh, he has promised to. Yes, to do social justice and all those sort of things. But there are bigger things at stake. And how great is it that we can come to the Lord's word and we can read these Psalms and we can be taught and learn how to pray. Ah, it's, it's just wonderful. Maybe that's going to be my prayer for today and the rest of the week. May, uh, with my mouth, I will greatly extol the Lord and the great throng. I will praise him. Let's together, um, you and I, uh, let's try to praise or greatly extol the Lord with our mouths to as many people as we can and share the good news of what he has done for us. Grace and peace to you.